Perfect. Oop, I lost audio. Is that on purpose? I can't recall. Nope, you're on mute. Okay, got it. You're on mute. Pass questions to Kevin. Ashley, can you hear us on this one? Yes, I can. Okay, so, oh, let me see your path, too. Sorry, because sometimes this gets stuck on you. Okay, so I've queued up our live stream. I'm not streaming yet, but I'm not sure if you guys are hearing. I don't hear anybody. Can you, can you hear us? Yep, I can hear you now. Right, that mic is not working. Okay. Yeah, uh, so let's take it off, I guess, and use the webcam mic instead. Okay. And I will stay in here in the room with you and I'll pass you whatever you need, okay? <laughs> oh. Okay. So, yeah, just another change of plans. I'm going to stay in the room with Kevin and I'll pass him what he needs so that he doesn't have to walk away from the camera and the oh, microphone. Great. Great. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. That's great. Okay. Um, just let me know when you guys are ready and I'll mute myself and I'll stop my camera. Um, right now, Kevin. Um, Kevin's camera is pinned, so it'll be the sole focus of the live stream. So we're all queued up. Um, we can go live as soon as you guys are ready. So just let me know when that is and we can deploy. All right, we can we can go live with the static and then at right yeah. at yep. five and switch. Yep, exactly. Yep, that's perfect. Okay. 
So do I need to press start screen on this one then? No. Nope. Oh, um, okay. You're good. And after the quiz, all okay. the questions are in. I'm going to go double check. I just have to do the switch again. Yeah. yeah. And remember, what you don't get to do, it'll be one. And then when you want to go overhead, all N, for me, it's all N. Okay? I'll be right back. Okay. Kevin, are you good if I go ahead and mute myself and turn my camera off? I, well, I'll tell you what. Yeah, I'd like to do that before we go live. Just let me know when you're. Oh, do you want to do right at five or go live? Well, so I'll, I'll start your live stream at oh. 357. Okay. And like you said, we'll just keep, stay focused on this image. Um, if you guys are ready to go, I'll go ahead and deploy. Um, but I am going to turn my um, audio and video off. So I guess in that sense, I will see you on the other side. Um, have a great presentation. I'm sure this will be amazing and wonderful. And I know I'm looking forward to it. A lot of people are. So um, enjoy. And we will email afterward um, to follow up. And All right. Sounds good. That, that way. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Talk soon. Hello everyone and welcome to the paint studio here at Golden Artist Colors. I'm Kevin Greeland and today we're going to be talking about So Flat, our new line of matte acrylic paints. So let's go ahead and take a look at So Flat. If you have questions, you can type them in the box and we have a material application specialist to answer your questions. So let's switch the camera. All right. So we're talking about so flat matte acrylics, our new line. We have a color chart we can take a look at. It is available in 40 colors. We just launched it and we have two sets. We have a set that's called a pop set and we have a set that's called zing set. So 40 colors, they are matte and leveling um, and fairly opaque to semi-opaque. Um, they're flat in sheen and flat in application. 
Um, you can see very bold and intense saturated color. Um, and they kind of have a velvet appearance, um, a real nice kind of toothy quality to them. So let's take a look at, we're gonna first look at the um, pop set. Um, so let's pull that out and look at the colors that's in the pop set. You can see it comes with a little guide. And of course it highlights more leveling, more opaque and more matte. And then if you open that up, there's a little color chart in there. In the pop set, of course, you get six colors. So we have our naphthol red light, you have a black, you have a cadmium primrose, you have a permanent green, you have a ultramarine blue, and you have a titanium white. So we'll do a little, we'll look at the color wheels, we'll talk about all of the sets, um, and then we'll kind of do a little live painting and talk about a couple of different techniques. So this is the pop set. And here is the permanent green, the ultra blue, titanium white, our naphthol red. Let me see if I can get these to spin around here. And our black. So you can see here's the colors, the permanent green, ultramarine blue, the uh, cadmium primrose, naphthol red light, our titanium white, and a black. And then we've also made a tint by mixing the titanium white with those colors. And we made a shade by mixing a little black, about 25% black, 50% on the white side to make um, a tint and a shade from that set. If we look at the color wheel using those same colors, we use the naphthol red, the cad yellow, and then the ultramarine blue. And we developed our secondary and tertiary colors. We also did a little paint out. So this is the colors that are in the set on both sides and the top. The lower half is kind of the mass tone of mixing those. And then the top half is kind of a wash. Um, so you can see the color variation that you can get with just those six colors from that set. Again, if you have questions, type them in the chat and our material application specialist is there to answer those questions. All right, so with the matte set, like I said, you get these six colors. We're gonna switch those out and look at the Zing set. Let me switch that for you. I'm gonna hang on to this just in case. So the Zing set, also comes with six colors and a little guide. That same guide has the um, color chart in there. And the six colors in the Zing set are the bismuth vanadate yellow, a red violet, cobalt teal, cadmium orange, naphthol pink, and our green yellow. So let's look at a couple of paint outs for that set. That's this set here. So we have the colors down on the left hand side. So let's go ahead and put those out for you. Cobalt teal, naphthol pink, and our green yellow. And again, we've painted them out on this side. Here we've done a tint by mixing a little bit of so flat titanium white. And then here we've done a shade by mixing the uh, so flat black with those. So tint and shade. And then we did the color wheel. And you can see using the naphthol pink as our red value, the bismuth vanadate yellow as the yellow value and the teal the cobalt teal is our blue value. So again, quite a range of colors there with the, the mats. Um, and then this one, just like we did with the pop set, we painted out um, the colors on this side and kind of split it on the diagonal with the top being more of a wash and these being a 50-50 mix of the colors. So this is the Zing set. And then for a little fun, 
we went ahead and did the pop colors here and the zing colors across the top. And then we did mixes for all of those. So quite a color range, even just by buying the two sets with the six colors, um, you can create quite a value study. All right, so um, a lot of people like the so flat um, for hard edge painting. So we can take a look at um, doing hard edge painting. So I'm gonna move these out of the way, put those over there and I'll talk a little bit about the process and painting. So, um, so typically the way I do this with the colors is when um, I start, I kind of do a little bit of a mock-up. So you can see this was the first mock-up and here we're using uh, the pop set. So let me show that one again. We're using the pop set. Um, the six colors that are in here, I use that to do my mock-up. So this was the first draft, not really quite happy with it, a few adjustments in color. So then I went ahead and I did the second mock-up. And so I was happier with this design. So ultimately I transferred that to this wooden panel and painted it out just like I did on my maquette. So to do the hard edge painting, to get these really crisp, clean lines, we used uh, a low tech tape and one of our mediums. And in particular, I like using matte medium, but you could use a soft gel or a matte gel. So let me switch this one out for one that's in progress. Let me hit the camera there by accident. So hopefully that didn't mess this up too badly. But I think we're okay. All right, so to do the hard edge painting, um, again, this was my maquette. I painted this up, kind of figured out my design, and then I enlarged that onto this wood panel um, to do the hard edge. Let me move these colors out of the way. Um, to do the hard edge, I simply taped off the areas that I want to conceal. So if you look at the maquette, I painted this in gray. Um, this is the gray area, so I've taped this off. To do a nice hard edge, use a low tack tape. And then I like using a little bit of the fluid matte medium. And what I'll do is just a, really a small amount. You don't need a lot, just a real small amount. And I'll just touch the edge of that tape line with the matte medium and then allow that to dry. So I don't have to put a real thick coat on, just a general thin coat, um, touch the edge, make sure you go over kind of the edge of the tape and the canvas or substrate that you're working on and then give that 10 minutes or so to dry. Uh, once that's dry, you can go in and start uh, painting. So uh, let's go ahead and pull out this is gonna be um, our yellow green. So before I spin that open, we'll take a look at the container. Again, so flat, matte acrylics, um, same bars as all of our containers have on there. Um, and then a color swatch on top so you can get a sense of the opacity. Like I said, most of the, the matte acrylics have been rated opaque or semi-opaque. Um, the one exception is the fluorescence. They're a little more translucent. Um, but let's take a look at painting with these so you can get a sense of the paint itself. It is um, on the fluid side. Uh, so let me move this down and uh, we'll just dip in here um, using a nice synthetic brush. And uh, we're just gonna paint that area in. The one thing you'll find with this is it's a little maybe a little thicker than our fluid, but it's definitely uh, more fluid than our um, traditional heavy body. So I'm just painting that on there using a synthetic brush, um, trying to get a nice uh, even coat. Um, in terms of uh, drying time, uh, the drying time is relatively about the same as our other acrylic products. So let's brush that on. And you can see it's hard to um, build this up or get a lot of texture. It does have a self-leveling quality to it. Um, 
I'll finish off this little section and then we can move on. Um, so it is hard to build up a lot of texture with this. You can see uh, nice leveling though. And I'll demonstrate that on another uh, sample. So to do hard edge painting, uh, generally a low tack tape and then use uh, a little fluid matte medium. You could use matte medium. You could use soft gel gloss, but a medium. And you just paint a little bit over that edge of that tape and then allow that to dry for a few minutes and we can pull that tape off. I'll give this a few minutes to dry and we'll come back to it and we'll pull the tape off um, so you can see what that looks like. Um, but I'll hold this up in the light. You can kind of see the brush strokes there while it's wet. But if you look at this yellow, um, as the light breaks over there, there's really very little brush stroke that's visible. And that's one of the nice qualities about the so flat is that it is um, self, kind of self leveling, has a real smooth velvety feel to it. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is take a look at um, mixing. So again, if you have questions, type those in the chat and our material application specialist will be able to answer those. We'll give that painting a few minutes to dry and peel off the tape. So let's talk about mixing them a little bit. So as I said, they come in 40 colors. Um, and in this particular case, we're using the, uh, I use the, the CAD orange here. And then I used one of our fluid products, the Quinn Magenta. And um, you can see again, those black bars um, with the swatch over it. So now this is our fluid. This is not our matte. This is a fluid acrylic, Quinn Magenta. And I've used the um, SoFlat Cadmium Orange here. Um, and so that's this area. So again, if I hold that in the light, you can really see that there's not a lot of reflectant coming off of that so flat. <coughs> Excuse me, but with the fluid, you can see that Quinn Magenta is pretty shiny in the light. So Quinn Magenta here, our fluid acrylic, kind of shiny, and our so flat matte, definitely no reflectance there. And then here I've simply made a mix of the CAD and the Quinn Magenta. And uh, at first I just put a few drops in of the Quinn Magenta into the Cadmium Orange. And so you can see on this first color that it's not um, very reflective. So that um, as I introduce more of the fluid acrylic, it does get to a more reflective quality. So this was about maybe 20% uh, paint. Um, here it's about 40% of that fluid, again, mixed with our so flat, and then about 70 to 80% uh, mixed in. And you can see then kind of going really almost at a, a 50-50 mix of both, you start to get that reflective quality in there. Um, so somebody was asking about, I think the medium over the tape would act like a glue. Um, it does a little bit, it seals that area. If I, I will grab that painting and pull this up and then you can take a look. So this was the area that I put some of that tape on. Um, and all I'm doing, let me get this corner here. Um, and so you can see all I'm doing is protecting that. And so the tape does pull up really easily because I'm not putting matte medium over the whole thing. Um, all I'm doing is, and I can demo this again with a small brush. So I'm just using a small brush and this is our fluid matte medium. And I'm just taking a little and putting it on the end of that brush. So not a lot. And all I'm doing is just brushing over a little bit of the edge of that tape. I'm not going over the whole piece of tape. I'm just going over the edge. And then I'll allow that to dry for a few minutes. And then I can go back over it with the paint. So that's how, I'm gonna, how I do the hard edge. Um, it won't 
glue the tape to the surface because we're not covering all the tape. We're just going over the edge. And we're, what we're doing is sealing that area of the tape to the canvas. Um, so when that dries, I can go back over and paint, which is what I've done here. It's still pretty wet, so I'm going to give this a few minutes. But um, if I pull this up, you can see I, where I put the tape, I get a nice clean edge. So we'll just give that a few minutes uh, to dry. And then we can pull more of that off. So yeah. Uh, so no, if you just go over the edge, the medium is not going to glue the tape to the whole surface because you're just going over maybe a quarter of that edge of the tape. All right. Uh, oh, so back to mixability. So we talked about uh, the so flat matte acrylics, that they're matte, they're leveling, and they're opaque, um, bold, intense, and saturated color. And it kind of has a, a velvety uh, appeal to it, I guess you could say. Um, and it goes on fairly flat, and you can see there's not a lot of reflective light compared to something like our Quin Magenta, which is um, our fluid. Um, so I, again, I mix these two. This is the um, cadmium orange in the so flat, and then I mixed it with one of our fluids. And so the thing with the matte acrylics is they, they can be mixed with all of our other products. It's just that, remember, it's going to affect the sheen and the texture. So you can see just by using the paint by itself, uh, it's very flat, very little light bouncing off of that surface. But if I mix it with another color um, that's not a matte acrylic, such as our fluid Quin Magenta, you can see how slowly I've changed that sheen. So yes, while they're mixable with other colors, just remember, it will change the sheen of the so flat and or the texture, particularly if you're mixing it with something like a heavy body instead of a fluid. All right, so I'm going to finish with that one. And we'll talk a little bit more about the matte acrylic. So I'll show you this one in the teal. So this is our cobalt teal. That's this color right here, cobalt teal. And we painted that down the left hand side. And then what I've done is going ahead just again to kind of emphasize the mixability of this paint is I have uh, mixed it in with our heavy body, our open, our high flow and our fluid. So you can see here, this mix is with heavy body. Um, and I use the teal so you'll see there's a shift in color. Now in terms of the texture, you can see it does retain a little bit of the texture of the heavy body, but this is about a 50-50 mix. Um, and then I mixed it with our teal fluid, our teal open. Again, you can see with the open, it retained a little bit of that texture. And then our teal high flow, so very little texture there. But again, a slight shift, very small, uh, maybe 10 to 20% shift in sheen compared to the cobalt teal in the so flat just by itself. So yes, you can mix any of the so flat colors. You can mix with any of our open, our heavy body, our high flow, or our fluid. But remember, it will affect the sheen and the texture. All right, one more to look at. And that is taking a look at this is our naphthol red light. So naphthol red light in the so flat. And we're painted that down the left hand side. And then here I've gone ahead and mixed it up with our heavy body, our fluid, our open and our high flow. I've also on this side introduced a little bit of our benzomidazolone yellow light. Again, just to show you that you can mix the so flat with any color. You can see how bold and intense that color is because the benzomidazolone yellow light, because it's so transparent, it had very little impact. Some on the color, it's definitely gotten warmer, um, but um, it has not changed that sheen too much, a little bit. So again, 
just depending on what you mix with that, you can change the sheen. But again, you can see here on the left-hand side, the so flat, no reflective light, but then the mixes with our heavy butter fluids that you can see there is some reflective light there. All right. And um, let me go ahead and show you these. Uh, I did some with stencils just to kind of show you some variation on here. So this was using a, a tree stencil. And all I did was paint the background with one blue. And then um, I just laid the stencil over top. And I did another blue. And that blue was a mixture of um, the, the cerulean blue and some white, just so it's a little bit lighter. So you can see um, matte on matte. And again, very little reflective light bouncing off that surface. And it's really kind of hard to see uh, even the palette knife or brush stroke marks. All right, so that's matte on matte. So then this is a nice contrast. Um, same idea, except I'm using a gloss gel. So I've used the cerulean blue to paint the background. And then I laid the stencil on there and I mixed our so flat with a gloss gel and did that on the stencil. So you can see just the contrast between the heavy body paint itself and a gloss gel. And again, you can see where that light is bouncing off the gloss, but not off the mat. And then the last one is kind of a reverse. I painted the background with cerulean blue, and then I went over it with the gloss medium. So I instantly changed it from a mat to a shiny, and I put the stencil on, and then I used the cerulean blue on the mat to go over top of the stencil. And again, so I've created this kind of contrast between the matte and the gloss. So again, mixable with our gels or paste, just know that it will impact the texture and or the sheen. All right, and this one is our, I decided to do a um, fluorescent one. So this is our fluorescent pink and I mixed it with our, um, heavy gel gloss. So you can see at about a 50-50 mixture, and I, I put it on the turquoise um, so flat. So you can see, again, no bouncing light on the matte acrylic, but there is some light bouncing off of the gel and the fluorescent pink. Um, and so the fluorescent pink, because I mix it with that gel, it does have a little bit of sheen because I used a gloss, all right? This one is different in that I used the so flat to paint the background and then I mixed the fluorescent violet. If we look at this fluorescent violet here, I mixed the fluorescent violet with our light molding paste and I simply did a stencil on that one. And so I'm just taking the fluorescent violet and I'm making a kind of a 50-50 mixture of fluorescent violet and light molding paste. And I'm just squeezing that across there with a palette knife. And I'll demo that one. Um, we'll demo something simpler with using the uh, light molding paste. So let me get that together and show you how we did that. So we have a board and I painted this one with our cadmium red dark. So painted with cadmium red dark. And I'm going to make a mixture of our uh, matte acrylic. So you can kind of see how I'm going to do this. I'm just going to put some paint out onto a plate here. And I'm mixing, you know, about two big palette knives, maybe a little bit more of the matte acrylic. And now I'm going to take some of our light molding paste and I'm going to mix that with that. So I'm going to scoop out a fair amount of that light molding paste. 
Make sure I'm not getting paint in the container. <laughs> That's probably a little more than I need, but um, so now I need to incorporate these. So I'm just going to start folding that mat into my light molding paste. And because it's the same color, um, it will be kind of like color on color, except because of the light molding paste, it's going to be a little bit lighter because it has that white to it. So I'm just going to incorporate all of that. And if you're doing this in the studio, of course, you could take your time and I think we're doing pretty good here. So now I have the paint really incorporated into our light molding paste. And the light molding paste, I just love that, um, the, the texture on that. Uh, I love this texture that the light molding paste uh, makes. It's just one of my favorite uh, paste. Um, and I just love mixing the matte with it. There's not a lot of sheen. So um, we have this stencil. So I'm just gonna kind of lay that stencil on there. And uh, let me give me some, some working room. <laughs> and I'm just going to use a large palette knife and I'm just going to scoop some of that up. I'm just going to lay that kind of across that edge, my leading edge. I won't do this whole thing. We'll just do a fair amount. Um, and then whether you're right hand or left hand, you just kind of want to pull you can pull the product across there. Kind of sweep up and then I can take that extra product and move it over to the other side. And again, I'm just going to kind of sweep over that surface and even it all out. We'll go one way this way. I feel like I covered everything. Now I can go ahead and pull up my stencil. I'll just lay that aside. It'll be kind of hard to tell here, um, but you can see the wet has a slight sheen, but I promise as it dries, because we use that light molding paste, um, it's going to go to a very matte surface. So lots of possibilities for mixing. Let me get a paper towel and clean a little bit of this up for you. You're not looking at my mess. <laughs> All right, let me see if we have any questions. We'll go back to the covering soap to the left. Okay. Um, talking about mixing with our other products, one thing I wanted to also show was the uh, fluorescence. So this is our fluorescence. You can see they're on the color chart here. We have fluorescent yellow, we have an orange, a red, a pink, a violet, and our green. Um, and while these are kind of rated semi-opaque, um, they are much more opaque though than our, their counterparts in the other lines. So we really tried to beef up their opacity. Um, and so on the top here, I've just done teal. And then to compare that, you can see how opaque that teal is over that black line. I've gone ahead and done each of the fluorescent colors. So again, the fluorescent yellow, the orange, the red, the pink, the violet, and the green. And again, just to emphasize the mixability with this, uh, this product with our other products is we've mixed it with micaceous iron oxide and that creates a little tooth. And so all I've done is uh, kind of about 60% uh, of fluorescent color and about 40% of the micaceous iron oxide. And again, you can see if I hold that up to the camera on an angle, um, very little reflective light. Um, and especially with the micaceous iron oxide, I love that kind of gritty nature of the micaceous iron oxide mixed with those colors. All right. One of the other things we want to talk about is in terms of mixing the soap flat with other products is Again, remember that it will impact either the color change um, or the sheen or the texture. So you can mix them, but it just impacts how they look. So here we've taken, this is, let me put the lid on this. 
This is our yellow green and I've painted it out by itself here. And then I'm going ahead and mix it with a couple of different products. And we have a few that we recommend um, over some others. And the reason that we recommend it is because it affects the sheen the least. Um, you'll see it does impact or change some of the textures. So this is our light molding paste and our matte acrylic mixed together. And you can see by doing that, I can build up some texture because it's very hard to build up texture with the so flat acrylic by itself because it tends to be self-leveling. Um, here, I've mixed it with a fiber paste. Um, so this would be great if I wanted to do a little watercolor on top of that. I've mixed it with our pumice. And so again, you can see uh, retaining most of that flat quality of the paint by itself. Um, all of these are fairly matte, um, but mixed with the pumice gel, you can see I was able to build up some texture. So if you're the kind of person that really wants a matte surface, but you like texture, we'd recommend using one of um, these products to build up that texture. Uh, here we have the crackle paste. Um, and that's designed to crack. You can see again, um, very little change in the sheen, uh, but obviously in the texture, so you can see fine cracks. If I hold that up to the camera, you can see the fine cracks there or bigger cracks where I've made it thicker. Uh, the other one that you can add is pastel ground. So here we've added the, again, the yellow green to pastel ground. So now I have a nice toothy surface that I can do pastel on if I'd like. And you can see I was able to build it up a little bit to create some texture. Also our color pouring medium. So I've added uh, our matte color pouring medium to, to the so flat color. Again, you can see I was able to create some texture with the palette knife, but it tends to self level. And then the last is the super matte medium. And I've saved that one for last because we're also recommending the super matte medium as a way of thinning out your paint uh, if you decide you needed to do that. Um, you can also use water, but again, you kind of want to keep that, you know, percentage down. Um, a lot of people also, when you add the water, thinking about doing it like a gouache. And remember, we talked about that with the um, modern set. We did kind of a wash up here. So um, the matte acrylics could be used like that because while you can use them for large color field painting, they're great for detail work as well. Um, increasing working time. So I kind of wanted to go over that. Um, one thing that you'll find, um, we can, you can use a couple of different things. Um, again, uh, if you have questions, you can email help at goldenpaints.com. Um, you can go to justpaint.org. We have some great articles on there about the new line of acrylics, um, the matte line of acrylics, um, two great articles. And we talk about thinning them or extending their, their use of time. Um, here, I, we wanted to use it in refillable markers. So we went ahead and used a little bit of the open thinner. And I have some empty markers and we'll kind of demonstrate that. All right, so um, for this one, we just I just did some napho pink up here and then some black and then we have refill markers. So this is an empty one and you can, you know, buy these in all different sizes and all different um, tips on there. Um, and they usually come with a little uh, ball in there so you can agitate or shake them up. Um, you can buy these and fill them with whatever color you want. Um, in this particular case, we did a little white and a little ultramarine blue, I believe. And then these two are just white. Um, but I used a little bit to, to do that. I made a mixture of the matte acrylic and a little bit of the open thinner. And when I say a little bit, I mean about 25%. I also put a few drops of water in there. So let's, let's take a look and see how that works. So if I just, and you usually activate these just by pressing them. So I can kind of just press and you can see, you know, I get a nice crisp line with that matte white um, on here. Let me do a bigger one. This is the blue one. And while I'm squiggly drawing on here, I'm going to check for messages. 
So you can see refillable marker using a little bit of thinner. You could also use the retarder. Um, with the retarder, we recommend around 15%. Um, you could try it just with water. So you just have to experiment and know that some of that's experimental. Uh, like I said in here, I used about 25% of the open thinner, a few drops of water, and I just mixed that up in a little cup and then poured it in here. Um, so you can see this is, if you take this off, you know, you would just pour the, your mixture down inside there. So it works in refillable markers as well. All right, let's move that one. And I'll put those back. We'll go back to the 40 colors. Make sure I got everything for you. Um, so for if, if definitely go to the justpaint.org and look at those two articles uh, or you can write this down. Um, but the ones that we're recommending to mix with these that have the least impact on the sheen um, for thinning out or you know making an extension, uh, the super matte medium, uh, also the color pouring medium, and then the pastel brown. So a, a great way of tinting, uh, making a soft um, pastel ground that you could come back and draw on. The crackle paste, you can see uh, mixing, we got nice cracks, both little and large there. Again, very little impact on the sheen. Uh, light molding paste, one of my favorites to mix there. I can build up the texture, but I can maintain that flat look. Uh, and then our fiber paste. So if you're into water media, you could tint a ground, use that as the ground and do some watercolor on top of there, or just use it to build up some texture. And then the last one was the pumice gel um, mixed with the, um, the so flat. And again, these were you know about a 50-50 ratio, um, just to kind of demonstrate. All right. So to recap, for you, let me look at the questions. All right, so hopefully Stace, hopefully MAS is answering those um, questions for you. If you have questions, put them in the uh, uh, chat box and uh, our material application specialist will get those answered. Um, so flat comes in 40 colors and we have uh, two different sets. We have this Zing set and the Pop set. So Zing and Pop besides the 40 colors. And then I can show you the little color wheel for each of these. So for the Pop, this is the color wheel set for Pop. And in the Pop, you get the Napo Red Light, the Cadmium Primrose, Ultramarine Blue, the Permanent Green, a black and the titanium white. I've done my color wheel and I've done a little paint out here of the six colors, added some white, added some black. So that's the pop set, pop. And then the other set that we have is the zing set. And the zing set, uh, these six colors that I put out here on the left-hand side, and that's the naphthal pink, the bismuth vanadate yellow, the cad orange, our green, uh, yellow green, excuse me, uh, cobalt teal, and our red violet. And then again, doing a tint and a shade, mixing a little bit of white and black with those. And I can show you in big painting, this is the pop set. We did a little maquette. As I said, we did a little maquette first, worked out our design. This was kind of the original one. Didn't like that one too much. Then went ahead and did this design and then painted it out on here. To do the hard edge painting, since we had some questions about that, let me go over the hard edge one again. So to do the hard edge painting, once I planned out my design, uh, this is the little maquette. So I just 
mapped out how I was going to do my design and then I've taped it up and started painting it out onto this uh, black wood panel. Um, and I, I'm using exclusively the Zing set for this one. Um, so just those colors. When I go over the edge of the tape, I'm just using a relatively small brush and hopefully one that's clean. <laughs> And I'm just dipping a little bit of my brush into that matte medium. So just a little bit. And then I'm just going over half of that piece of tape, just the very edge. That's all I'm doing. Um, and I'm just going around that little edge. And hopefully you can see kind of where the wet mark is on that tape. And you can see it's just the edge of the tape. I'm not going over the whole tape, just over the edge. And I'm going to allow that to dry a good 10, 20 minutes for that to dry. And then I can go back and start painting with the, uh, with the so flat color. And so I've already done that up in this corner with the green and we're letting that dry, but I wanted to peel this one off. Um, and let's see, we'll do this live on camera and I'll angle it so you can see the best. So you can see this green is still a little wet because there's a little bit of sheen to it. Um, the cobalt teal I've already painted earlier, um, and it's super dry. So I'm just going to peel this tape off, and I put the matte medium on here, and so you can see um, it gives you a really nice, clean edge while I'm pulling that off. All right. So a nice clean edge here between the wet and the dry. This is still a little wet, so I'm not going to touch it. And I can even do that down here with these little pieces that I tore to make that edge. And again, so if you look, I can try and hold that up a little bit, but a nice clean edge um, between all of these lines by using that blue tape and a little bit of the matte medium. So if you want to make a really hard edge, um, consider using, you know, a thinner medium. You could use some, if you're on canvas, maybe a soft gel gloss or soft gel matte. Uh, on a wood panel, you could use the matte medium or fluid matte medium. Um, really, it's just a matter of preference which one you like to create that hard edge. All right. Uh, mixability. We had a question about mixability. Yes, you can mix these with all lines of our paint. Let me get those boards. Um, I'll just do the teal and we'll talk maybe about the molding paste and um, this one. So you can mix our, you can mix our paints, our heavy body, our open, our fluid or our matte. Um, you can mix all of those. Just know that it will affect the color and the texture and a little bit of the sheen. So here I used our cobalt teal and I just painted that down this side. And then I did a 50-50 mix of the matte with our other lines of paint. So this is the heavy body. This is the fluid, open and high flow. And in this case, I was using the teal mixed with the cobalt teal. So you'll see there's a little shift in color but you can see there's a little bit of texture from the brush for the heavy body and for the open, the smallest amount of texture with the fluid and the least amount of texture with the high flow. So while they are mixable with all lines of paint, just remember if you're really going after it for that matte quality, if you mix it with the other paint, you're going to change the sheen. Um, let me have the, thank you. So if we look at this one, I think this is one of the good ones that reinforces that shift in sheen. So this is the cat orange and this is the Quinn magenta and the cat orange is the matte acrylic. All right. The fluid Quinn magenta is the one that's on the bottom. Um, and so you can see the real difference. If I hold that to the light, you can see the gloss, the reflective nature of this fluid versus the reflective nature of the mat. And then over here on this side, I just increase the amount of fluid. And so you can see as I go kind of 
up the scale of color, you can see how the sheen has changed. So again, very matte because it's just the matte acrylic by itself, a little bit of the fluid, more fluid, more fluid, and more fluid until where I've changed the sheen. So again, you can see that light bouncing off these two at the top because of the fluid color and here, not at all. So the thing to remember with, or the takeaway, I guess you can say with the matte acrylics is they really are uh, very opaque. Um, they're matte um, and they tend to self-level so you can't build up a lot of texture. If you wanna build up a lot of texture, we would recommend using a gel or a paste or something that you could mix with them. Here we've used our fluorescent pink mixed with a gel. Uh, here we used a variety. Um, I can quick run through these, the light molding paste, the fiber paste, the pumice gel, super matte medium, our color pouring medium, our pastel ground, and our crackle paste. Again, all mixable, but just remember can impact sheen or color. The last thing I wanted to go over was the fluorescence. Um, again, these are the fluorescent colors right here, not the teal, but the fluorescent colors, um, semi-opaque, a little bit transparent over darker colors. Um, and then here I've mixed it with the micaceous iron oxide. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, again, to show you the um, mixability of this with any of our heavy body or fluid colors, um, it's just going to impact the sheen and or the texture. All right, refillable markers. Let's take a look at doing that. All right, and so we have, um, we kind of have some uh, two articles that go over this. You can read just paint.org um, that go over the percentages for mixing. Um, but if you want to do this, it, you know, you just have to experiment a little bit, but you can read those articles. Um, here I'm using open thinner and I used about 25% open thinner to my volume of paint with a few drops of water. Um, and I've just mixed that together and poured that in here. And so you can see, I can, you know, use that marker. And these markers have been filled for about three or four weeks now, um, still working. As long as I keep that lid tight on there, I shouldn't have any problems. Um, this comes in a white as well. We made a mix of the white. Um, so you can see that on there. Again, all kinds of different markers you can buy and fill those yourself uh, using the, a little bit of the open thinner. You could also use the retarder. Um, you can use a satin glazing liquid. Uh, just know again, whatever you're mixing with that will affect the sheen. Um, we can look at, uh, let's just look at this one. You know, this is the matte acrylic by itself, but I've mixed it with a gel. So you can see, I get that sheen. So um, depending on what I mix to put in my marker could change that opacity a little bit. Um, we, as I said about, no more than 25% of this open thinner. Again, read the article or you can email us at help at Golden Paints because they can go over uh, all those percentages if you don't remember, but about a three to one uh, paint ratio. Uh, what else can I tell you? Thick layers. So you'll want to apply this rather thinly and a recommendation of two to three layers. Um, if you start getting into four or five layers, um, you could get a little bit of gloss to happen. Um, what's the last thing I can part with? Um, in terms of mixability, those two sets, we had the pop and the zing set. So pop and zing, we made a couple of um, charge to go along with that. I can't fit everything in the camera view, but this is using the pop set here and the zing set across here. Uh, and you can see mixed with all the different color combinations that you can get by mixing the two together. Um, definitely great for hard edge painting. 
All right, so let's um, draw to a conclusion here. Let me get my color chart. Lots of colors. Any more questions are coming in? All right. Uh, um, all right, so color chart, uh, 40 colors. Go to justpaint.org to read some beautiful articles about the SoFlat. Um, you can also email us at help at golden paints. Um, the colors are starting to show up on the shelves right now. A lot of they're in the store, so you can get these. Um, if you're not sure about which ones to consider for color, um, you can consider the Zing set or the Pop set. Um, I like working on wood panels to do my uh, paintings. So you can pick yourself up a little wood panel. Um, for me, I do a little maquette, figure out what my pattern is going to look like and then scale it up onto the panels. Um, for the hard edge paintings, I tend to use the matte medium and a little glue tape. So let me switch the camera. All right, so thank you for joining us in the studio, looking at our new line of matte acrylic paints. Uh, remember that there are more matte, um, they're opaque and they're leveling. Uh, you can mix them with our other golden acrylic products. Just remember it will impact the sheen or the texture. Thank you for joining. And we'll switch the camera back. And leave you with those. Ashley, is there anything else you'd like to do? No, that's it. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you.